more Entraniacs. Since going low carb while getting ready for Challenge Roth last year and talking all about low carb, low carb, low carb, low carb, Dan Plews, S Fuels, You Can, all of this low carb stuff, a lot of people have been asking now in 2020, am I still low carb? The answer is yes. And we haven't done a what I eat in a day since like a couple of years ago when I wasn't low carb. So today we're gonna go through start to finish what I have for food, supplements, fluid, coffee. That's coming up right now. So, Traniacs, first thing in the morning is related to food, but it's not actually food. First thing I do in the morning is start every day off with a big glass of water. A lot of hunger and a lot of injuries come from not being well hydrated enough. So I start off the day right by slamming a giant glass of water. Along with that, I take all of my supplements for the day. So I start off the morning with a probiotic. Um, I actually like Megaspore because it's shelf stable. You can just keep it in the cupboard and it's been proven to get into your gut a little bit more. So Megaspore is what I usually use. Take a teaspoon of curcumin to help bring down inflammation in my stomach. Inflammation in the stomach, really common to triathletes because we spend a lot of time without blood in our stomach. I take a calcium and magnesium supplement. I found out from Ben Hoffman that in research he did that as you train more and more and more, your body can actually leach some of the calcium out of your bones. So important to take a little bit of calcium. Uh, I take a little bit of B vitamins, helps with some energy production. I take a lot of omega-3 that's high in EPA and DHA to keep inflammation down. Uh, I take a gut restore here. This is just a specific product that I use that I'm trying to repair the lining of my gut, which some testing has shown that my gut is a little bit damaged. I take a vitamin C and then I take a vitamin D because uh, Winnipeg, we don't really get a lot of vitamin D. To me, it even feels like a lot because I've historically over the last bunch of years not really been into supplements, but as I've researched what happens with endurance training and like we've put our body through a lot and the detrimental effects of that are like actually serious. So a lot of these things are just fairly basic things that we need to have high levels of as people and as endurance athletes kind of gets ground down. And then basically every morning for an hour, Gracie and I we go out to Triathlon Terran headquarters with a decaf coffee because uh, I just want to be able to have caffeine and still have it give me a kick when I need it, but most days I don't really need it. and. Uh, There's nothing special about this decaf coffee. I made it in like a pot, so no fancy coffee montage like Eric Lagerstrom. And uh, in this hour that I do every single morning, this is like the important stuff that I do every day. I write the books, I write workouts, I like really key business moving stuff. How do I get in? My feet are cold. And I light a candle so it doesn't smell like a pain cavern in here. Gracie comes up, cuddles with me, I sip my coffee, and today we're voicing over all of the 4,000 workouts on TeamTrainiac.com. Actually just doing six of the 4,000 workouts on TeamTrainiac.com. And she stares at me the entire time. All right, now that that hour of super critical work is done, it's time for coffee number two 
and some actual calories, which is a bit of a concoction. So what I put into the coffee is a little bit of fat, a little bit of protein. I like a little bit of protein to make sure that your muscles aren't getting torn up, that you've got basically some building blocks. So what I use in my morning coffee is bone broth collagen protein, really, really good for the joints and the stomach. A little bit of MCT oil, very easily turned into energy by the body. And then instead of butter, I like to use ghee. Just a little bit better for the stomach um, microbiome. This is, uh, is good. Feeds a little bit of the good bacteria in your stomach as opposed to butter. And then um, just to top up to make sure that I feel full, I'll have somewhere around two or three tables or um, yeah, tablespoons of a nut butter. And I'm just using peanut butter right now. I know it's got a bit of a higher mold content, but I eat a lot and I'm not a millionaire. So this is a cheaper way to get some nut butter. And something worth pointing out is that you can see that it's 814 right now. I try to leave at least 12 hours between my last meal of the day before and first meal the morning of. So I had a little snack last night at eight o'clock, wait 12 hours, and that's just good to give your body kind of a time to digest, rest a little bit, rest the gut a little bit, and it's a chance to have a lot of time spent at a lower blood glucose level. For a lot of people that have heard of intermittent fasting, for people who aren't active and burning tons and tons of muscle glycogen, that 18 hour fast, great. For us endurance athletes, 12 hours, probably a really good start. And um, then final thing about this is if I was doing an intense ride, like a really hard run or a really hard bike, I would probably have a UCAN bar instead of the peanut butter to get some carbs in me. But for 75, 80% of my workouts, which aren't that intense, this is it. All right, so first workout of the day, we got about 60 minute ride. There's gonna be four times six minutes at 250 watts, 60 RPM, a real leg strength kind of workout. Um, it's just an hour, it's 250 watts, which is like target race pace is 220 watts. So not really super intense, just kind of long and grinding. So I don't really need any carbs. So what I've got is just a light electrolyte drink. This is S Fuels which has electrolytes, no carbs in it. And I would use anything like just plain old water or you can electrolyte powder, or I'm not a big fan of noon, but noon would work just fine. And uh, that's what I'll have for just about any workout up to about two and a half hours. Once it starts going into three hours or more, then I'd probably have an S-Fuels bar or you can bar and uh, no carbs. No carbs for most workouts. Like I said, just those really sharp, intense workouts, which tend to be 45 to 75 minutes, in which case I just have the UCAN bar for carbs beforehand, and I don't need any carbs during. Just same sort of drink, and that's it. All right, let's get this on. Okay, ride done. Before I have like a big main, what you'd think of a meal as, I have a shake. And what that shake entails is an unripe banana. Very, very good for the good gut bacteria down here. Uh, kind of a resistant starch and then bone broth protein. I really like the ancient nutrition stuff. It's just good for you. No dairy. Mix that up into a shake, and uh, then an hour later, we'll talk about the main meal. All right, so it's now about an hour later. 
stomach has settled, more blood back in the stomach after the workout. That's why we have that shake because your blood is still in your extremities right after a workout, but you want to top back up with some carbs and some protein to start the repair process, but not a lot of blood in here. So that shake is like pre-digested, easily assimilated. But now, basically, as soon as I get hungry, which is like an hour to 90 minutes after that shake, it's time for our first major meal of the day, which is this. Scrambled eggs, just a little bit of seasoning salt in there, a little bit of hot sauce. There are four eggs in there. We have four, no, three mini cucumbers here with a bunch of salt on them to get the electrolytes back up about three quarters of a cup of mixed berries to get the carbs back topped up. But berries, really, really good for keeping a low glycemic response. And then last on the list is some sun butter. And the order that I eat this in is I'll eat this first and then this, I will have as many spoonfuls as I need to feel full. Don't wanna do it the other way. If you have this first and munch on this, while this is cooking, probably gonna overeat a lot of this and this is really calorie dense. So instead, eat a lot of this, which is really nutrient dense, not super calorie dense. Get that volume in your stomach, feel full. And then you still want some fat because there's only just a little bit of fat in the eggs here. So you want some fat and to make sure that you don't overeat, have this at the end. Just, I don't know, ends up being like two and a half tablespoons worth. So this is gonna tide me over for a good amount of time, probably two and a half, three hours. And in that time, I'll do a strength session and I'll talk about how I feel for that. Mmm, that's salt on top. After a sweaty workout in the morning, perfect. About a 40 minute strength session, heavy, heavy stuff today. As you can see, I specifically wanted to show you that and not the warm up that I do for like actually 80% of the time that I spend with this heavy, heavy strength workout. <laughs> so because, uh, the last meal was around 11.50 a.m. and right now it's 2.20 p.m. and I had some carbs in that meal with the berries. I didn't have anything before this. After, in about 10 minutes, we're gonna have something. Post second workout, we're doing an apple, really good fiber, low on the Glycemic index as far as fruit, and again, feeds the good bacteria in your gut because of the fiber, and an S-Fuels bar. Pretty low net carbs, and 13 grams of protein. And it tastes delicious. Next up, evening. So it is currently 5.22, uh, exactly three hours since I last ate, and I'm a little peckish. So, I'm also a little low on calories, but I'm kind of around where I want to be for carbs. I'm at around 70 grams. I'll total all this up, what my total protein, fat, and carbs were for the day at the end, but right now I'm at 70 net carbs. So that means uh, I don't have a ton left, gonna have a little bit of cheese, and then a little bit of natural pepperoni, and some of these seaweed snacks, because really good for iodine. Iodine is very good for people that have hormone problems. Um, so that's that, and Kim, what's for supper? Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, demonstrate supper for us. 
And this is a bowl of chicken salad that I made for Taryn. There's rotisserie chicken, lettuce, avocado, um, healthy mayonnaise, mustard, seasonings. It's that. And then this is uh, broccoli cheese soup, um, which is made with broccoli and organic chicken broth and uh, some potatoes to give it a bit of thickness and cashews because it's just the recipe and a little bit of uh, lactose-free cheddar cheese. Ta-da! What's the macronutrient breakdown? I need to know exactly. Don't know, don't care. Great. Mm. Dessert. Alright, so last meal of the night. I'm gonna have another S Fuels bar for some protein, a little bit of peanut butter again so that it digests really, really slowly. Whatever I've got in my stomach digests really slowly overnight. And then uh, evening supplements. A little bit of magnesium for relaxation. I have vitamin C again, vitamin D again, and another version of omega-3 just to keep the inflammation down. The whole idea for this meal is really not anything more thought out than I'm a little bit hungry at the end of the day, tracking my calories are just a little bit low, protein is a little bit low, so we just want to boost that up a little bit and have my last meal or whatever I eat before eight o'clock because tomorrow we do the same thing starting at 8 a.m. and that gives us a 12 hour window of nothing. Give me a second now. Let me tally up where we're at with the final tally for carbs, protein, fat, and calories at the end of the day. All right. So the final tally, once I have tallied it all up, on this app that I use when I start doing food tracking. It's called Senza. It has a big database of all kinds of foods. It is 3,088 calories. That's right in line with what I'd want. I try to go for around 3,000 to 4,000. 3,000 on a smaller training day, 4,000 on a bigger training day. And we're not training super hard right now with what's going on in the world, so right in line. Net carbs, 121. I target 130 grams of carbs every single day. Bang on. Protein, 168. Try to hit around one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And right now I'm about 162. So bang on there. That's where you want to be for endurance performance. And then fat just makes up the rest. So the total breakdown ends up being roughly around 60% of calories coming from fat, 22% coming from protein, and the remaining 18% coming from carbs. And this is a really good number. This is what Dr. Dan Plews, my coach, who is an expert on low carbohydrate performance and my nutritionist, Steph Lowe, all support roughly around these guidelines. Now, if you want to start following anything like this, if you want information that we've put together for free with Dan Plews, you can go to triathlonterran.com forward slash the Plews. Now, if you want information that we've put together with Dr. Dan Plews or with Steph Lowe that we've done for free about how to get started with this kind of diet, with food recommendations and macronutrient and calorie recommendations, there will be links in the description below to the free resources that we put together with Plews and Steph. And if you've already maybe downloaded those or you're new here and you haven't yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. That was a good day of eating. I enjoyed that. Later, Trainiacs.